I'm going to use this 900 watt servo motor controller with reverse on the fly. Standard PJ pulley 4 groove. Standard 5 volt LED light and mounting hardware. You can find this at servomotorkit.com and I'm going to install it on this CD-210V 8x16 leg purchased on eBay. It does have a 750 watt motor on it but it's brushed. These are actual speeds that it runs. It's been tested before. Notice there's no travel until right there. Slowest speed it'll run is 200. It does have really good torque. That's too slow for a brush motor. If you stop a brush motor, well, this brush motor, controller speeds it up when I put load on it. I guess it'll keep it from burning the brushes. Top speed is 1164. That's all I need. I've had it on the other higher speed belt. I see no use for it. I'm not even going to do that. We're just going to install it on the slow speed. Start by pulling this cover off to expose the belts. Next, pull this cover off. Make sure it's unplugged. Before you unplug this, make note of the wires and the wire colors and the plugs. I like to take a picture of it, close up, so I have a record, save the picture so you don't delete it. If some of the wires are the same color, red and red, you need to mark them. Interesting enough, this little plug, power, 5 volts. I'm willing to bet that runs the tack. Next up, remove this housing. There's four Phillips screws on this one. Probably should pull this first before removing the housing. It's done. Pull the knob. This little pin will snap off. Like that. Two little Phillips screws. That allows the motor wires to drop down where you have access to them to disconnect the motor. You probably should mark them or photo it. I'll mark them. Now you got this out of the way. Next, loosen the belt tensioner nut. It's eight millimeter, just back it way off. Like that. Now loosen the belt tensioner pulley assembly. You're gonna have to hold the other side with a smaller, like a 12 or whatever millimeter wrench it is. This one's modified, so it only takes one side. Take the belt off, out of the way. Turn the motor pulley until you can access what's supposed to be a set screw, but it's not. I guess they couldn't buy a set screw. It might cost more than a much larger bolt. It's pretty tight. We'll try the double pinch bar. And this one under here. There it is. Notice, no Allen, no set screw, it's a giant Allen head to get caught on things. That's not very good. Next, remove the four Allen bolt for the motor. Last one, you're gonna have to hold the motor up and down a little bit, maybe. Okay. Pull the motor out the back. It is a little bigger than the other one. Set it aside, or heavier, maybe. Check motor to see if it fits in the space allowed. 
Look at this end, see if you can line up the bolts. This one feels like it'll fit, but there is that little black bolt right there that's coming through from the other side. I'm gonna have to pull that out and grind it so it's not sticking through in the way. This might also be in the way, it might have to be ground some. I also ran into this bolt coming too far through and getting in the way. We're just gonna back it out a little bit and lock it in place. Once you achieve clearance, just screw it in with the four button head bolts provided. Sometimes these slots are, or these holes are slightly off. You may have to kind of just hit it slightly with a round file just to get a little bit more travel. This one fit, but it was tight. Remove these belts out of the way. Then hand tighten this, just kind of down this way and get it tight so you can get this running true to get an idea where this is going to set. Put the keyway in on the motor. Slide this in. A straight edge can help you estimate where the belt alignment is. Tighten the set screws. I'm just going to eyeball it. I'll check alignment later when the belt's on it and see how it runs. If it doesn't run straight, I'll adjust this in or out just a little bit. Put the belt back on. Motor to the big inside. And then the middle one, no, the little one on this pulley, little pulley on the center to the outside pulley here. Tighten this again, just kind of snug it, and then we're going to tighten the belt. What we'll do is we'll pull this out, it's not going to come out very far, and start snugging this, watching the belt. This position should move by itself, should find center. Tighten up mounting bolt, the belts are going to get a little tighter. So check it. Again, you'll have to hold that side. Or do the mod. You can find the mod in the video, the video one that I did on this. Little more. That feels right, but I can see this pulley's in just a little too much, so I'm going to loosen it up and slide it out a little bit. That looks good. I like that. Notice I'm using long Allen wrenches. You're probably going to need some long Allen wrenches. 
these three wires and this pot. You might as well remove it. It's a 5K pot. We can't use it on any of our electronics. This is the digital display. The three pin plug is for the magnetic pickup. The two pin plug is for the five volt power supply for the tack. This wire is what needs to be connected to our control unit. This is the power plug that runs the tack on the 210 lathe. Red is 5 volts positive, black is negative, and it is DC. This light, 5 volts DC, runs off of this plug right here. This is inside the control unit. You can't see these plugs. This side is supposed to be 5 positive. This side is supposed to be positive. What we're going to do is we're going to cut this off and we're going to send it through the control unit, side of the control unit right here. We'll do that by drilling a hole in the side of the control unit, size 964, so it'll be nice and tight around this. Then we will solder these two wires to these two wires. Eventually I will have these wires made up, but I'm still trying to get these plugs. I decided to just go ahead and put these two pieces on. I don't really like them much, but it does cover the belt drive and it does allow this and somebody's gonna want that. I suppose we'll fit a piece of sheet metal here and fit the control unit to here. Push it in a good spot, we can run the wires through that hole and see how it works. Okay, I made it M6, tapped it, drilled it and tapped it, just a sheet metal screw here. This is going to screw on here, the motor's going to screw on here. Let me set this so it doesn't, so it pushes against that. Okay, I made that little tin plate, screwed it on here. We'll see how stable it is. Run this wire through here. Notice I put some electrical tape on it. I wanted to make sure the edges weren't sharp. And we'll screw this on right here. Now, there's lots of ways this can be done. For instance, 2 by 6 could be screwed on the back, and it would make a great support for this. There is heat dissipation to consider. I've never had a problem with it. But, I may move this to a more advanced system where it's a heat sink involved in it in the near future. This is version one. Okay, I pulled the motor wire up here, plugged it in, ran this out the back. That little yellow, white wire is gonna come through this hole, through this hole. We'll plug both into this. Now I want you to notice this is bare. It's completely exposed to metal filings. Metal filings can get in anywhere here and they can get in through there. So I will seal this in. I will come up with a method to seal it up and I'll show you that. It's probably just going to be putting tape over it and then sealing it in with hot glue. Probably do that after we plug it in and test it. So two plug, three plug. And screw this in right here. Like that. Okay, with the belt drive in the low range, spindle's turning 100 RPM, motor's turning 400. That's Four to one, four rotation motor to one rotation spindle. That's going to be astronomical torque on that. It's got the knob sticking up, so I'm not going to try to hang on to it, but I already know I won't be able to. Slowest speed I can achieve 
on the spindle is 52 RPM. It doesn't speed up and you can't stop it. High speed I can achieve on the spindle, 893. There's still a little bit of noise here somewhere. I'm gonna see if I can find it. Let's do a test. Nothing's changed with the motor. Kind of hard to see, but there's a lot of little ridges. Let's try to run the same cut with the new motor and see what happens. Okay, here we go. We'll run it. Let's run the spindle at 800 RPM. Pretty cool. Yo, hot. That was a big cut. This is a 750 watt system, 7 amp thermal overload protection. 900 watt system. Notice the 10 amp orange thermal overload protection switch. This is the 750 watt. Slow speed 57. Highest spindle speed, 1100. This is the 900 watt motor. Slowest spindle speed is about 60. Both of them you cannot stop. Highest spindle speed is 895. Plus or minus about 10. Reverse is that fast on both of them. 